Welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you what Qt layouts are, how they work, and then we're going to do a little example of how we go from some design into creating a responsive window using Qt Creator. So let's get started. I've created a window here, a form, I should say, uh, and uh, just to have it as a playground. So first of all, what are Qt layouts? Cute layouts, they're containers. They contain UI elements. You throw a bunch of UI elements in them, and these elements stay within that layout. But more, is, more importantly, what these layouts do is they align these elements in a particular order. So let's just take a look at how they do. So I'm going to throw up, drop a vertical layout here onto the form, and then I'm going to drop a horizontal layout also here onto the form. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw some push buttons in there so that you can see exactly uh, what happens. So when I throw a push button, a push button on the vertical layout, uh, it gets placed in the middle of the layout and it stays inside the layout. When I go and throw another push button on the layout, notice that it automatically it aligns the the other button on top of each other and it divides the space evenly among the two. And then I can throw another button in there, and so forth. Uh, and that's it. In in essence, like that's it. You're now an expert. Well, no one really. Well, I shouldn't say who ex expert is. But in essence, now you understand how a layout works. You throw UI elements in them, and they automatically get aligned. And as you can imagine, if we get horizontal layout, uh, if if we put these elements into a horizontal layout, we can imagine that they will also get aligned in a horizontal fashion. And that's it. And the cool thing about these layouts is that they are responsive to a window size change. So for example, if I change the size of the layout, you will notice that the push buttons automatically get enlarged and aligned so that the length of the layout gets divided evenly among the two. Similarly, if I put them back onto the vertical layout and I try to stretch, notice that they all, the spacing in between them gets aligned. Now, each UI element um, behaves differently inside these layouts. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but some UI elements get stretched on the horizontal side. So for instance, push buttons, notice that they, they if I stretch to the right, they keep getting stretched. Whereas if I stretch vertically, the button side doesn't change. It's just the spacing in between them that changes. Uh, oops. Uh, but there are some other ones that try to occupy as much space as, as possible, and that's just how they work. And we'll see an example of that in a bit. Now, another, one thing that's important when you're working with layouts is the spacing that gets created between these elements. You'll notice that maybe you do not you want these elements to remain in a vertical fashion but you would like there to be not this much spacing in between them and that comes in by and you fix this by using spacers so you typically use vertical spacers with vertical layouts horizontal spacers with horizontal layouts but i mean you know you have the option to do whatever you want with them but i can grab a vertical spacer and the vertical spacer is an element that tries to occupy occupy as much space as possible. So I get the vertical spacer and I, if I put it here, it'll be aligned vertically at the very bottom and it'll try to occupy as much space as possible in a vertical direction. Notice that this, this spacer, it got aligned vertically with all the other UI elements, but it didn't over occupy space. And now if I grab the layout and I select it through here, because it's hard to select through here since now we have a spacer. But if I, uh, I select it, I can grab it through here and notice that the spacer does get stretched out. And and the buttons, they, they remain vertically and there's no spacing between them. And so this is great when you need some UI elements to remain vert to be aligned by the layout. But you don't want the spacing to be divided among them. So you start to combine spacers with layouts in order to get this behavior. Similarly, now what happens if I get these four elements and I throw them in here? Well, as I said earlier, this vertical uh, spacer, it tries to occupy as much vertical space as possible. So in here, it doesn't really have any effect. But if I delete the vertical spacer and I use a horizontal spacer and I put it, I'm going to put it in between these two. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to try to occupy as much space as possible in between these two buttons. So now the two buttons on the left, they get squeezed to their minimum size that they can possibly be and then have this space in between them, and then the next button. And if you stretch it, 
you will notice that the buttons themselves don't change their size, although this fella on the right does move and gets pushed by the spacer. If I was to move this to the left, then it's the other way around. The elements on the left get pushed by the spacer. So when you think of spacers, you think of an element that will be in between or it will be where, where you place that element and it will try to occupy as much space as possible, squeezing the elements to their smallest possible size. And in essence, this is, this is what you need to know in order to create responsive forms. And uh, after this is just how you use the elements with the, with the different layouts and the combination of a of, of bunch of layouts. So there's another layout, okay? Let's, let's talk about the other layout since, since, since we're having fun here. The other layout, let me move this to the right, is a grid layout. Now, I don't think personally, this is a personal opinion, I don't think the grid layout is that important, to at least to understand. Because if you know how to work with vertical layouts and horizontal layouts, you can work, you can create your own grid layout because a grid layout is just a bunch of vertical and horizontal layouts combined together. So let's get started. So I'm just going to put a push button here, right? It, it's, it's a grid. It's a grid of, of one row and one column. And let's say I throw another one to the bottom. Now it's what? Two rows, one column. If I get another push button and throw it to the right, now it's two rows, two, uh, sorry, two rows, two columns, and of course, with an element missing there. And I can throw another thing there. Well, you can, you can notice that we could do this just by using a combination of horizontal and vertical layouts. So what is this? This is one horizontal layout. This is another horizontal layout. And then within the horizontal layouts, I have a vertical layout of layouts. So let, let's, just, let's just do it. So I'm just going to get two horizontal layouts, one here, another one here. And then I'm going to get two buttons, put one here and another one here. And then I'm going to do it again for this one and another one here. Now that looks like that, right? But we need to make it so that it's the same. So now I get a vertical layout and I make it a little bigger. And then I grab these two and grab these two. Ah, not you. I grab these two and I just drop them in there. And that's it. Notice that it's the same. It's a grid. It creates a grid. Now, of course, this is much more cleaner since you don't have so many nested objects within another. But you can see that that just from using vertical and horizontal, you can get the exact same behavior. Uh, and it's similar with the form. I'm not going to go over the form layout. We can make another video for that if necessary. What I want to do real quick, though, is I want to talk to you about the different properties of a layout here on the right. So I'm going to go back to this playground of, of uh, horizontal layout that we're using. We have the option to select the spacing between the first element and the margin. So the left margin, you can create some spacing between the border of the the left border of the layout and the first but uh, and the first UI element. In this case, a button, and you can change it. Same thing with top, which creates some spacing from the top, but you can't really see it because we have very thin elements. And then right and bottom. Layout spacing is the spacing in between the two elements. Notice there's a little gap between all of them. If you wanted that gap to be bigger, you make this bigger, and it affects the spacer and everything. And, and if you make this bigger, this is respected when you increase the size. There's always going to be that spacing between the two, uh, between every element within the layout. And the last thing that I, and I think this is very important, this is actually very cool because when you have a form or, or some kind of window and you want to resize the window, perhaps you would like this window to resize certain elements in a different fashion. So you say, if my window is very small, uh, I want this element to get scaled less than the other one. Or if I want this window to get very big, I would like my left side of the window to enlarge and not my right side, or to enlarge in a different pr proportion. So you have this layout stretch. And I like, it's kind of like a stretch factor, is how much would you like that element to stretch? Now, in order to show you that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna throw this to the right, just so that it's easier to, so you can see exactly what's going on. So there's four zeros. Each zero corresponds to the element within the layout. If I throw another push button, you will notice that another zero will get added. Now we have five zeros. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, give them a stretch factor that goes from five to four to three to one. Okay. Notice now that each element 
has a size and notice that each one has a smaller length relative to the previous one and this is because of the stretch factor and when you stretch the layout you will realize that this left UI element stretches a little bit more than the other ones and this one stretches more than these three and so on and you can place with it you can play with these things you can set this to eight and this to you can set them all to twos and say you know I want this button to enlarge because I and I want the other ones to remain in the same size so all the ones with twos they will have the same size and the one with eight will get four times the 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 the, the spacing as the other four and that's it this is how you how you work with it all right and of course there's a tons of other properties that you can go through that in combination with the layout you can create different behaviors we can't really go about them but I'm just gonna go over one since we're looking at buttons you can play with these uh, definitely that there's a lot to learn we can't really cover everything but if you click on a button let's say and let's say you go to its minimum size uh, not minimum size size policy notice that this button enlarges as I as I do this well what if I didn't want the button to enlarge it doesn't need to get bigger so I can change this from minimum to let's just say maximum and even though this is an 8 even though this is an 8 in our in our layout stretch we have said that this push button should not get bigger than it has to be so now when I enlarge this this button will not it'll stay the same size regardless of how stretched this is this. so again there's a lot of properties to play with but in essence you use the layouts in order to align these elements either vertically or horizontally you combine a bunch of these layouts together in order to create a proper uh, window that is responsive in a particular way so let's go over a quick example so we can do this real quick so I'm gonna delete all of this and I'm going to make this window slightly smaller and I'm going to bring this this calculator here and um, what I want to show you is that we're gonna create this calculator we're gonna ignore this part on the top we're going to ignore these M keys here on the on the, this row, and we're just going to create all these keys, and then we're going to create this this um, text box on the top where we show the results and our input and so on. I'm not going to code it. We're not going to create the actual calculator. We're just going to uh, try to create the same layout and have the same scenario where we can actually stretch this, and uh, we will ignore that history on the right. But you know, it follows this stretchiness so that it's it's nice. All right, so. Um, so imagine that this window, this calculator, is our design. We designed it in a piece of paper, and now we want to create it as a form. Let's just say that that's what we're trying to do. So the important thing is here, the first step you want to ask is, how can I cut this UI design? Can I cut this form vertically, or can I cut it horizontally? If I cut it vertically, I would have to chop this, this text box right here, which means that I cannot cut it vertically. You know, if you imagine cutting through this form ab around the edges of every element, if I cut it vertically, I would cut through this UI element. So I cannot, my first cut cannot be vertically. So I want to go horizontal cuts. And notice that I can do this through here, through here, through here, through here. And every cut that we do horizontally becomes a layout. What kind of layout depends on the elements inside that cut. So for instance, in here, uh, this is just one element. It's a text box. So it doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal. I'm just going to pick vertical. And this represents my text box at the top. And I'm going to throw, let's say, a plain text at it. Boom. Right? That's where I enter my text. Like in this case, we have a zero. I'll type a zero and hit OK. And there's a zero. Right? I'm not going to format it or anything. And then the next one is going to be what? We have one. Notice that there's different ways we can do this. We can chop this in through here. We can chop this through here. So what I'm going to do is just to 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 have um, a variation so that so you get an, an idea of some examples is I'm going to cut this form through here, and the top part is this text edit. The bottom part, and then this bottom overall part, I'm going to cut it again through here. So we separate these white keys along with these operators on the right from the top two. So that means that I'm going to get another layout, and this. Um, these uh, layout right here since it's two of them this is going to be a two vertical layouts so one one uh it's going to be one vertical layout and then within each spot we're going to have two horizontal layouts 
So let, 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 let me just show you. So you get a vertical layout, right? Because we have two rows, so one, two, and then within each row, we have a horizontal layout. So I'm gonna throw a horizontal layout and I'm gonna put it right in front of it so that we know it corresponds to this. And then here's another horizontal layout, right? And then to make it faster, I know or I know I talked mess about the grid layout. To make it faster, the whole bottom piece can be a grid layout. So I can just grab this uh, grid layout to make it faster. I'm going to put it down here. All right, and that's it. So now what I want to do is I want to do this this one. So this is just a bunch of, a bunch of buttons. So let's just populate it. One, two, three, four, and then we have rows to the right. Uh, Sometimes, there you go, one, two, and another one. And then we keep adding this, populate all of these ones. And I think, uh, no, can we copy paste? I don't know if it lets you, no, no, it does not. And then we do another one, another one, right? So that's the whole bottom. And then the, the other two rows that we have here, we're going to put one, two, three, four, and then another four here. Notice that we could have done the whole thing as a grid, but I just wanted to show you that uh, we can do combinations of a vertical and a horizontal as we did with the previous example. So obviously these two have to stay vertically on top of each other. So I'm gonna grab these two and I'm gonna throw them here. And now we have basically this top row here, this bottom row here, this grid down here, and then this text edit here. And what we need to do now is we need to put all of this in a vertical fashion. We have one, two, three, four major layouts that are get put inside a vertical layout. So I grab this and I put this here. And then one thing to look out for is that some the way you the way you select items. Um, uh, oops, the way you select items, they get thrown in order in here. So I may, I select them in the proper order, and obviously it didn't do what I wanted, but I can throw it here, and there it is. Sometimes it can get difficult to select things, so when you try to select, let's say, a layout and move an element into the layout, instead of actually dragging it in here, just drag it to the item and the, and the window here, and it's easier. So now, here we have a calculator, and notice that that this top piece, this top piece, right, uh, which this one, is too big. It's not supposed to be this big. So this um, vertical layout has three elements, a grid and two vertical layouts, and they all have a certain spacing. And the one we want to make not so big is the one in the middle, number two. So when we come up here, number two should stay small, and actually, they're actually in the order. Not They're, they're not... Uh, I made a mistake. They're not in this order. They are in this order. So the first one, we don't want the first one to take too much space. So the first one, I'm going to give it a value of 1, and the other one, let's say, a value of 8, and the other one, a value of 10. Obviously, this is not right, but if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This occupies two rows. This occupies four rows. So this is supposed to be twice as big as this one. So this could be 16. And that would make it look somewhat like our calculator back here again it's not pretty but it, it you know it does this arrangement and again this is more for uh, education purposes you would just use the grid for the whole thing or you would just use a combination of all vertical and horizontal so there's no point in mixing all these things uh, but yeah so this is basically how it works and this is the same scenario you do here right uh, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you uh, if you liked it if you found it useful uh, and you don't mind leave a like subscribe if you like these kinds of videos and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one peace